I doing with my life? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Not too long ago, I heard about this weird game jam that was happening, where you basically do a normal 48 hour game jam over the weekend, but instead of sitting at home or whatever, you just do it on a train. And I thought, what the hell, I've done a few global game jams before, so this shouldn't be too hard. Like I've got a flight to Brisbane, but other than that, it should be pretty easy. So without doing any sort of research, I bought a ticket and forgot about it. A few days later, I joined the Slack that was set up for the jam to have a quick look through the schedule, and... Uh oh. Uh oh. I looked through the Slack a little more and found there was a, you know, another really small, very tiny issue. Um, probably not even worth mentioning really, but turns out the uh, trains um, didn't have power? Uh, or internet, so yeah, you know, not really, not really a big deal. It's not like, it's not like you need that for, for making, for making games, just for making games or anything, you know. The jam was based on a similar jam that happens in the US, and right before buying a ticket, I kind of figured, well, you know, these guys can do it. It can't be that bad. But it turns out the US jam is over 52 hours instead of 48, and they have a super nice modern train that has power, sleeping carriages, tables, heaps of spaces, just for participants. It's like train jam heaven. Our bootleg Australian version on the other hand had no power, spotty internet, aeroplane style seats with this tiny tray table, way less space, and we shared a regular train with civilians, as we called them, um, who were mostly bogans. Oh, and uh, you know, 5am starts, so excellent. Out of all of these, power was definitely the biggest constraint as there's no way my laptop that runs on like AA batteries is gonna make it through the day running something as power hungry as Unity. So the organizers bought these little battery packs which was all well and good, but there weren't enough packs for everyone, so each team only had one pack and the packs only provided a few hours of power. Some jammers got really creative with this constraint. Um, some people bought iPads to make art on, one jammer made all their art from watercolor sketches. But my favorite were the people that bought their pocket chips and made games with Pico 8. The pocket chip is like this uh, big Game Boy sort of looking thing that runs Linux and is super low power. I set up my own as a little git server with an access point so we could all share files and be super cool, but we ended up just using USB sticks instead. So whatever, it's cool, it's not like I spent 4 hours getting that set up, or whatever. I also managed to hack my beat up Surface Pro to go into like mega power saving mode with some registry hacks. The only problem was it made everything super slow. It's okay, you an idiot. You go when you feel like it. Anyway, so jam day rolled around and I flew up to Brisbane, checked into my hotel, and made my way down to the info night. They covered things about our schedule and stuff, like power saving tips and all that good stuff, but most importantly announced the theme, which was lines. Pretty easy as far as themes go, since you could probably find lines in just about anything, but it's probably for the best since the jam was definitely hard enough already. After a bit more info, we got into team forming. Solo jamming's great, but I think you really have to be in a team with some random people you've never met before to get that full jam experience, you know? Or maybe I'm just a weirdo, I don't know. So I basically turned to the guy sitting next to me and asked if he wanted to be in a team. And it worked somehow. That guy turned out to be Orchun, this super nice guy that had worked on like a million games, we chatted for a bit, and then moved around and found George, who was also super talented, then headed down to the pub to grab dinner and think of game ideas. So I felt a bit like this in the team, but it's, it's cool. Getting everyone to agree on a game idea is usually really tricky, and this time was no exception. The best advice I've heard about this was at my first game jam, where they basically said to throw out the first two ideas you have and go with the third, which has somehow always worked well for me. My immediate thought for the lines theme was this FPS where all the bullets you fire would leave trails, and then those trails would turn into lasers, meaning you couldn't move past them. You'd then have to figure out how to clear a level with a few enemies without blocking yourself in. Whether this actually works in practice is, uh... I then thought instead of having the lines be lasers, it might be cool to have it so the player can only move along the lines they shoot. But since you have a limited amount of bullets, you'd have to decide between shooting enemies or saving enough bullets to be able to get out of the level. We then got really set on this fishing game somehow, because fishing minigames are sick. And you know fishing lines would suit the theme or whatever, but, you know, mostly the first reason. So this idea turned into like a fish assassin game somehow, but the team wasn't sold on it, so we moved on. We were really stuck on trying to make this fishing thing work, but after ages of brainstorming, we really couldn't find anything that we all loved, so we all headed off for the night to try to get some sleep in before this stupidly early start the next morning. So the morning rolled around, and I headed off to the station after having about 5 alarms go off. I managed to get about 6 hours sleep, but still felt like crap somehow. But that didn't stop the organizers taking photos like everything was cool. Anyway, all aboard, and off we went. After sorting out our seats, we got the team together and started talking ideas again, which was over surprisingly fast. 
Steve, this guy who'd left the team to go make a sick poetry game, mentioned as an offhand comment that it'd be funny to be a fortune teller that pretends to read your palm but is actually secretly scrolling your Facebook profile under the table. I don't know if it was the lack of sleep, but everyone was just immediately on board. It was such a stupid game idea that I, I just couldn't say no. We then got into workshopping it and talking about if it was actually a viable idea, since we really wanted to have a solid plan before firing up our laptops to save power. Because if you really think about it, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Like, how are you supposed to predict someone's future from their Facebook posts? So we got talking about the things people share over social media and how we could use that. We also thought it'd be cool to have clues about the character on their hand, like, you know, a missing wedding ring or like a bit of tomato sauce, but we couldn't really find a way to make it work. We decided early on that the game would be split into a few different views, one of the person you're telling the fortune of, one of the hand you're reading, and one of the phone. Making characters was definitely the hardest part, since we're all pretty great at development but terrible writers. We ended up with a heap of scrapped ideas for characters, like a serial killer, a closeted gay dude, a lonely dude, and a thick dude. But we couldn't really get them to be funny enough, or couldn't really find ways to flesh them out. Lonely Dude kind of turned into this creepy character that we had a few funny ideas for, but we put it on the back burner and actually started to make the game. The work split really nicely. George would make all the art on his iPad, Orchan would make the Facebook feed, and I would put everything together and make the dialogue and interaction system. By about two, I had the dialogue and data loading system up and running in a pretty rough state. I also just had to use this very sexy picture of uh, Danny DeVito that I had lying around, don't ask. Orchon had the Facebook feed UI looking pretty good, and George had made a single hand, but by god it was a good looking hand. As we were working on the game throughout the day, we chatted every now and then about character ideas and slowly built up the character of Creepy Dude, which we named Cecil. We thought he should be pretty creepy, but also incredibly hateable and annoying as possible. So we had this stuff in his feed to make him seem like kind of a terrible person, like blocking walkways and how he doesn't shower. George then showed us some of his character designs, and my god. <laughs> when I first heard the game idea, I thought it'd be super lighthearted with this really goofy art style, but George really steered it in this super weird, super surreal direction, which was really awesome. He showed us a few different character designs, and the one for Cecil was just so distinct, but so damn weird, we, we just had to choose him. I, I mean, just look at this dude. We also found ourselves an audio guy, Tom, to make some sweet background music. Anyway, he banged out this awesome little tune just with GarageBand on his phone. I think we just kind of told him to make something mystic and off he went. It turned out really great. In between coding, I took little breaks to photoshop stuff for the feed. Instead of spending ages drawing each photo, I thought it'd be really funny just to edit like stock photos. So when we were in pockets of mobile reception, I was frantically googling around for photos that we could make into posts. To try and match the rest of the game, I chucked a filter on them all and just kind of popped the character's face on there. We finally arrived in Sydney around 9 and made our way to a local uni there that had organised some nice tacos and beds for us. By the end of the first day, we had the game running pretty well, with the data loaders for the Facebook feed and the dialogue up and running. We just needed content to fill the game with. So we ate some tacos, charged all our batteries and tech, and headed off to sleep. The next morning, we would have gotten a bit of a sleep in since the train only left at 7.30, but then daylight saving smacked us, pushing the clocks forward an hour, so it was more like 6.30. And then we had to wake up early to get to the station and stuff, so it was probably like the equivalent of a 5.30 start again. <sighs> well, same thing different day, we collected our stuff and headed off on the train to Melbourne. Second day was definitely a lot more straightforward since we knew exactly what we had to do. I chucked more of George's art into the game and everything started coming together nicely. We also had this great moment where I put the hand sprite into the character sprite place temporarily for testing and Orchard next to me thought it'd be a funny idea for a character, so we somehow made it into a character. We chucked around some ideas and eventually it turned into this immortal deity thing that had come to visit you on vacation for amusement even though it knew you were a fake, which seems like the obvious choice really. Towards the end of the train ride, things were wrapping up nicely. We finalised the UI, polished up the Facebook posts, and made everything sway, which I think fits the game nicely. We definitely underestimated the time it'd take to make characters. We finished up Cecil, but only got about a quarter of the hand character done by the end of the trip. Turns out, making posts, multiple questions with three different responses, answers to those questions, and Yelp reviews would be a lot of work. Who knew? It was okay though. Controversial opinion, but... I don't think it's super important to crunch and get everything done in time just for a game jam, so we really didn't. Which doesn't make for a super dramatic video, but oh well. I think it's important to take lots of breaks during a jam, especially to make time for scones, since at the end of the day we're all doing this for fun and we should actually be having fun. Like if we wanted to crunch, well, we know where to find it. 
Anyway, we finally arrived in Melbourne, parted ways. Everybody go home. Go home. And I got a fat 10 hours of sleep. As a part of the jam, we got to show off our games at PAX, but since that was a week away, we took some time after the jam was finished to polish up the game a little. We added a tutorial, some nicer fonts, and finished off the hand character, which we named Zalgo. PAX rolled around, and we showed off the game at a little booth in the hallway. It didn't always get a heap of traffic since it was in a terrible location, but the people who did play our game really seemed to like it, and that was really good. All in all, I think it was a rad experience, and I'll definitely be getting down next year. You can go play our game over an itch, um, I built it out to the browser so you don't have to install anything, you can just click play, it's very nice. It's also open source, so you can go visit the code, make your own characters, or use assets in your own project if you give credit. 